Hey, Jim Bergman with MeasureQuick. Once in a while we get a question on superheat and subcooling calculations and why they don't appear to agree. And so I'm on a blended refrigerant here, uh, R458A, and you'll see that it looks like I have a saturation temperature of 45 degrees and a suction line of about 65 degrees. Let's say just to keep the math simple and it looks like a superheat of about 20. Then on the, on the high side, you look at, you know, 90.7, 102, it looked like a subcooling of approximately 12 degrees, yet the superheat and the subcooling are 14.4 and 7.1. And if we were to look at the field piece app, and I'll just switch apps here so you guys can see it, uh, you'll see that you know we have the same suction line temperature, but the vapor saturation temperature were 50 and 98, so 50 and 98 on the uh, on the saturation. We'll go back to measure quick for just a minute, and we'll see that we're at. 45 and 102, they're definitely different, right? Well, if you look at the superheat and subcooling at 14.3 and 7.1, and we go back to the field piece app, we'll see that those, those are identical, uh, 14 and 7.5, right? So almost identical superheat and subcooling ratings. So why is this the case? Well, MeasureQuick does some things different than most other apps do because we're doing them the right way, which is, to show you the average coil temperature instead of the dew point and the bubble point. So if you tap on the target up here for the gauge, you'll see that this refrigerant is a high glide refrigerant. So the center of the glide is 45 degrees and it's got a dew point temperature of 49.6. So remember we use, you know, easy way to remember it's duper heat and bub cool, right? We use dew point temperature for calculating the superheat, bubble point for calculating the subcooling and you can see that we have a dew point temperature of 49.6. If we go back to the app and we say, okay, 49 minus 64, that's where we get our 14.7 degrees of superheat. And a lot of you probably have not seen this before, but this actually goes back to some work that uh, Emerson's done on refrigerants. And if we go back, this is an Emerson presentation, Emerson presentation about average coil temperature. And you actually, to get the average coil temperature of a blended refrigerant, we have to take the uh, pressure in the bubble point column and the pressure to the dew point column is right at the bottom and you'll see the average coil temp is 40% of the uh, bubble temp plus 60% of the dew point column to get the average coil temperature on the evaporator side. And this is because of the flash gas in the evaporator. And if we go down to the condenser, you'll see that to find the average condensing temp, we take the, the bubble point plus the dew point temp divided by two, and that gives us average uh, condensing temperature. So in MeasureQuick, when we're using MeasureQuick, what we do is we're calculating average coil temperature because we're calculating where those targets should be for the high and the low side temperature. And we use dew point and bubble point in the background to calculate superheat and subcooling. So you'll notice that our app always agrees with other apps with the superheat and subcooling because uh, they're like we are using dew point and bubble point, but the difference is is we're displaying average coil temp under your gauge, which is a much more representative of uh, the temperature you should be looking for, especially if you're doing refrigeration, than displaying the dew point or the bubble point of the refrigerant on the gauge set. So they are different, but this is the correct way of doing it, and uh, hopefully some of the other manufacturers will pick up on this and do the same at some point. Because it, it does, for technicians, you know, you do want, the only, the only reason we measure pressure is to get corresponding saturation temperature or to get temperature of the coil. And if this was a pure refrigerant, you would see that uh, our, our products would agree, field piece and, and measure quick would agree exactly. But uh, when, you, when you're doing air conditioning refrigeration, the only reason we measure pressure is to get coil temperature. So when we decided in measure quick, that was very important and we needed to use the average, you know, calculate the average coil temp for the blends. So you'll see this in, in uh, really pronounced like this one here uh, for um, uh, 458A or blue on, which is a high glide refrigerant. And then so, not so much, but still a little bit on even like refrigerants like 410A. And if you get on a pure refrigerant like R22, they'll agree. So hopefully this helps uh, make some sense of that. And uh, you can now rest your, your mind that uh, Measure Quick's doing it the right way. And uh, if you've got any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the video. Thanks a lot for watching.